Hey guys, my name is Darian. And I'm Sarah. Welcome to the Chai Guys podcast, where we spill the chai on Iranian American Gen Z culture. This week's episode, we have the wonderful Gray family. Welcome. Hello. Thank you so much. Hi. We're so excited to be here. I love it. We're Thank thrilled. You for coming. Appreciate Thank it. you. So Thank good. you, guys. Of course. Okay, so let's start it off. So Nina just came back from the clinic. I love it. Literally in her Amazing. scrubs. Very on par. Yeah. Right yeah. I, love I love that. On par, Dr. Nina Gray. I literally was Amazing. in the office all day, and there were, my staff was like, I don't know if you're going to make it. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to make it even if I go in my scrubs. So thank you for having me. It's just such a pleasure to be here. I love your positive attitude after all those patients. You're still so smiley oh, like that's right. amazing oh that's thank amazing. you i think i had 25 cases and i do kids so we had 25 cases today yeah and it was nice but thank you positivity is key in life right some days we get the smile some days we get a little attitude it depends clean up, it depends. Clean up the dishes <laughs> right. no you know nicolette wouldn't do that yeah. so <laughs> she just gets the attitude and then i walk to my room yeah. so it's so funny. Okay, so Nicola, I know you just came back from Europe, a trip with yes. Kalani from Dance Moms, right? She's yeah. a friend. So I um, I had a Europe trip with Kalani for her birthday. That's awesome. And then while we were in Spain for her birthday, I managed to wander to London and then That's Paris, awesome. which wow. feels like my second home. I... I am literally going back in December. I get back and I book my next plane ticket. There. I so I assume it. you're I very like well traveled, right? Where are some of the places you've been to just recently? Paris, London. I did that two times in the past few mm-hmm. months, and then I did Spain, mm-hmm. Barcelona, wow. Ibiza. Madrid, Ibiza, and then I so lived in New York just for the past year. I literally <laughs> just moved back to LA. Okay. <laughs> I'm a literally citizen of the world. <laughs> she is favorite yeah. pizza shop in New York, just because I'm just in. Loyal New York. I don't eat dairy and gluten in America. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. Nicolette Gray of her. Oh, no, but she said in America. How in Nicolette Europe, Gray of her. I eat her. anything right. in America. Yeah. I'm complete health freak. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel I feel no, like yeah. I feel less bloated like in Europe of after course. I eat and then America. No, yeah. Of course. Then, yeah. I could like do anything, like eat yeah. anything, like drink anything. I come back and I'm skinnier. Weight, right? yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So we're moving to Europe. Yeah, I, well, I'm going to live in Paris. Could that actually be on the horizon yeah. for you guys? What I'm going to do is I'm going to spend half my year in L.A., half my year in Paris, okay. and then the South. Can you take your sister with you? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, so yeah. party at my house, everybody. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> you say you want to yeah. move to Italy. I do, but not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. I still, Because, you know, I'm still like my career, you know, and whatnot, so it's hard for me to move. But eventually, you'll never know where you find me. Yeah. But, Nicola, I just want to say. Hopefully, you can live in Iran. You yeah, know that's what? what she wants. I really am one of those people that I still have properties there. It's like we've I I'm so sentimental about my country. I was born in Tehran. It's my life, my heart is there and um I would definitely move back at least for half of the year if not longer. Sure. So and look at my goosebumps. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm true and true Iranian, you know, that's so awesome. all through heart, yeah. It's so good you hold it so close to you and I feel like you know, you've come to America a long time ago and it's great that you've really held that in, in you still that love for it because some people might that immigrated to America might you know shy away from it or you know change their whole identity and you know especially being in the public right. light that they don't want to even you know talk about it so oh, no. yeah I've been so proud of being Iranian being an Iranian woman and and living in this country and I'm so proud of how strong I am and how strong I've raised both my girls to be, you know? And I think it's because of being born in Iran from what I went through, the original revolution in 1979, and I've carried that strength and I've helped them be the strongest possible versions of themselves. I mean, she moved to New York. I didn't even know she was living there. I was like, why are you staying in New York so long? She's like, mom, I packed my bags. You didn't realize I'm gone. I'm like, oh. Bye. (laughs) She's like, bye. I'm like, when are you coming back? She's like, maybe a year, I'm not sure, you know? (laughs) And I'm really proud. And just one thing to say about the Iranian women who are fighting for their freedom alongside all the Iranian people, I'm so proud of them. And I'm just in awe. I'm humbled by their strength, by their passion, by their perseverance, and just beyond proud. So on that note, you know, have you guys been... I'm sure you guys have obviously been keeping up with the situation in Iran. Since day one. Of course. And, you know, just given the fact that you two have, you know, very large platforms, how have you guys been able to, uh, you know, amplify their voices? You know, what do you feel that you guys are are doing about it, you know? Well, I think um, from day one that I heard about Masa Amini, it's just my heart dropped. And I feel like 
every person, every Iranian, whether they live in Iran or outside Iran, and anybody who's associated knows anyone Iranian, their hearts just hasn't healed yet. Sure. You know, my heart's still broken. Since that day, I have posted every, almost every single day, I believe, within my power, about something on my feed, on my... Um, Story. So, sorry, I'm so tired. From now, now you're now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so tired. You know, <laughs> on my stories, and I have not posted anything. Usually, you need to do a selfie. I'm at dinner. I just don't even have the heart. When the brave Iranian people are going through such an obstacle, such battles at home, how could I post a selfie of myself? We're going to the protests on Saturday. Um, thank you. Every day I'm trying to amplify our voice, not just to Iranian people, but my assistants. You know, I said, have you heard about this? No, I haven't. I said, yeah, because media is not covering it. But let me tell you, let me show you a picture. Like everywhere I am, I'm trying my best. I, I personally, as Nina, will not give up till we're free. I Thank I you guys so mission. much for being yeah. so civically engaged and, you know, obviously being such a good influence for your followers and, you know, people who look up to you guys. So I have a question for you. You know, how are you sort of how are you both kind of like navigating that gray area between, you know, being kind of sensitive about like the situation in Iran posting and also just like creating your own content? Have you guys been able to find like a medium in between or do you feel it's more like one or the other? I have been posting story posts so far, reposting everything we were talking the other day and I was like, I want to turn my whole feed into this. Yeah. And it, it was something I was thinking about. I think I definitely want to post more like Instagram reels, educating people on it. But to be honest, before all of this, I knew what was going on with Iran, but it was we didn't sit down and she explained to me everything about the Iranian history until this. Like, I was watching other people. I was learning all about the culture that I came from, like more than I knew ever before. And I didn't feel educated enough to, like, sit down and explain what was going on to others. But I was definitely, like, passing on posts. 100%. Everything. And I think it's especially hard, you know, Nicola, for our generation, too, because we didn't really experience, you know, like, maybe living in Iran uh, or kind of the customs that go with it. But the, just the fact that we were the same blood. We have the same mm -hmm. blood. And it's just, like, our parents, you know, have been through um, – living in Iran. Unprecedented think, experiences. Yeah, unprecedented right. experiences. I think, I know you like changed your Instagram bio. Even like that step, I think is just so important for people to have conversations and just like, like you said, um, you know, it's just to educate people that are maybe non-Iranian exactly. um, and that it's not a trend. It's not just like a one it's week. Not, it's not. Instagram no. Instagram I've been educating awesome. everyone yeah. around oh, me in person. Like I've been sure. spitting out this information, yeah. just like educating people on it because people genuinely don't know. 100%. They really don't. And I think not enough people are posting, 100%. even Iranians. Like yeah. I like I grew up in a community of like 99 percent. Iranians mm -hmm. and none of them have no. posted. No. no, they haven't. None. Nobody has posted it. One. One. And I'm like, why yeah. haven't you? Like, literally one person. And I'm just like, oh mm -hmm. my god. Yeah. Yeah. That's something we've kind of asked our guests throughout all season. Is that, you know, what do you think of that? Like people ignoring it. Is it justified that action? It's made her very angry. Yeah, I, like I she's literally true. unfollowed people because of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not like, as I should. This isn't yeah. some Instagram trend. This is something real happening in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not political, you know. It's, no. Yeah, it's not even political, and this is real. This is for, like this is genuinely real. How how can people live like this on the other side of the world just because we're in this like LA bubble? Exactly. Doesn't mean that that exactly. isn't happening. Exactly. And you know, let's go back to where Nicolette said, you know, I didn't really know about my culture. What I think what you were meaning. She knew about her culture and everything. Yeah, obviously. I did. I but did no, not no, know anything. No, no, no. But let me just um, really um, go deeper into it. So she didn't realize, like, I had to sit down with her, tell her what I went through during the 1979 mm -hmm. revolution and all the bad that came with it. That as a mother, you don't want to, you want to protect your children not from it. That's family. why we're here. That's why, you know, anyway. So I have shielded both my girls from what I really lived through on a day to day Um but I felt like with what's happening now, it was like, that's it. It's off. This is what happened to me. This is how I grew up. This is the life I live. So let's go. Let's explain to everybody. Let's just share on our stories. Let's educate people. This is not a trend. It's not going to go away. And let me tell you, because I'm a little bit older, you know, just by a year or so, just celebrated my yeah. 25th birthday, you know. Exactly. But um, some of my generation, they're not posting. You know why? They say, oh, 
I have a khalo, I have an aunt in Iran, and I have properties in Iran. Everyone. Who cares? Everybody does. Yeah. My goal is for a free Iran. Yeah. I live here. If I don't, I would love to be able to visit free Iran. I'd love to be able to go with my daughters. But that's not, no, that's selfish. What I, my goal here is, or all of our goals should be to really free Iran for the people who live there for them. So I don't care what family member you have, how many properties you have. If you think you have a bank account, they're going to close post or I'm going to unfollow you. And I have. Yeah. I get yeah. so mad at people who are just like, hey, you want to go grab a cup of coffee? No, I'm so sorry. I'm too busy seeing like my country like fall apart, you know. So it seems like you're not afraid to call out, you know, no. anyone who's not no. speaking up. No, but to, of course, but typical Nina fashion. Yeah. I, I I don't care. I'll call out everybody. You're very outspoken. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. I let she is. Know. She says yeah. the truth. Yeah. And I say she's the always truth. taught me that. Like, yeah, there's times where I no. fall away from that, and then I'm like, yeah. no, just say the truth. Like, yeah. if it's too much, then that person... <laughs> just then say it. It's not your fault. Like, that's the truth. That's, that's the truth. It is. And I live through it. So as a young girl, when I was about five is when the 1979 revolution happened. And I remember my mom buzzing my hair short so I'd look like a boy so I could ride a bicycle outside my house. And I'd cry my eyes out, and my mom's like, one day you'll know. Because I always loved my hair. But, I'd, you know, have a buzz cut just to ride a bicycle. I remember she told me, say your name is, like, I think it was Amir, like a typical Persian boy name if they stopped you so that you wouldn't be pulled away. I mean, I didn't really, I was like, okay, mommy, this doesn't sound right, but what I'll do whatever you say, you know. It's, it's incredibly risky, though, like, and you didn't wear, obviously, no rusadi because you were trying to pass as, like, a, a guy. It, I looked like a boy. I was, like, risky. five, six years old, yeah. risky. But my mom was always like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not going to let my girl have less rights than a boy. And she pushed my sister and I out there, you know. And it was like, your name is Amir, your name is Amir. And I said, okay. Yeah. You know, the social know? consciousness is very intergenerational. I'm seeing yeah. like Nicolette embodies that those same mm -hmm. values, and it's it's very evident. You know, when you talk about what it means to be a strong Iranian woman, both of you guys so clearly really embody those morals and values. And Thank you know, you. it means the world to us that you guys are both so passionate about this, and you know, using mm -hmm. your platforms for good. And you know, I just want to talk a little bit about. Uh, how your mother-daughter, just given the fact that your bond is very unique and, of course, high profile, how your relationship has kind of evolved over time, you know, before and after your fame? You guys seem so close, which is yeah. so, so great yeah. to see. Yeah, we so are. Yeah. Like, my mom yeah. is my best friend, and I look awesome. up to her so best much. Friend. Thank you. Yeah. She's my best friend. I feel too. like we got closer as we got thrown into the social media world. I, I think one, so, too. like, when we first went on Dr. Phil... Like, we were getting so hated on by everybody, and we only had each other. And so yeah. how did you yeah. guys sure. handle that? I've always been a very crazy, chaotic person. Like, I never cared what people thought. Good for but you. But yeah. there was one point where I was a little worried. I literally called my mom, like, a day after the episode aired. And I was like, should we, like, move to another country? Yeah. Like, should we move <laughs> to Dubai? Oh, and she goes, oh, sorry. Yeah. My uh -huh. friend in Dubai called me. It's going viral oh, there. Yeah. We can't go no, there. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, we're stuck. Like, we're stuck. I was like, that's out. That's done. Yeah, yeah no and my thanks. mom was like, you know what you do? You fight through this, and we, you do what you wanted in the first place, and you create a career out of this on social media. For right, sure. Right. And I think you yeah. handled it, like, so intelligently. Like, you created a brand for yourself, a brand for your family. And, you know, you launched your own jewelry business at 18 years old, which is insane so impressive. that's so impressive mm -hmm. can you talk about more also of your like business ventures as well yes yeah, so i actually have some very exciting ventures coming soon i um so i've dabbled into like the fashion business space but over the past year i've really i've really tapped into my passion for tv and film and I've spent the past year just, like, studying every part of it. Like, I moved to New York. I went to, like, film school, theater conservatories yeah. over the whole year. Wow. And I'm back in L.A. now, yeah. still in a acting conservatory. And I'm currently, like, working on some projects awesome. and in that space. That's so that's what I'm doing now. I'm spending most of my days writing or I'm literally... Or reading. Reading. So I was reading or writing. I'm so proud of you. Do you think you would consider your mom to be like your momager, kind of like in that sense? Given, do you guys work together, Not or exactly. do you think we your projects are separate? We no. work together, and she helps me as my mother. But at, as of this point, I have no manager. Okay. Yeah, she manages herself. 
yeah. Woman show. Yeah. That's awesome. I was for a little bit when she was younger, but yeah. you know, she she's just <laughs> she just went from like I'm a young teenager to yeah, adult exactly. like that. Yeah, as and I should. have some friends that I have like business yeah. partners with. And we work together a lot, but as of this point, I was just like, no. nobody's going to fight for my career the way I am. Yes. And, and just given, yeah. like, your quick rise to fame and just given you had to really adapt to, you know, what it means to be famous and you probably had just a switch in lifestyle, like, so quickly, I'm sure there was a lot to adjust to. And just given, like, you know, the amount, the response, the nature of the response that you received online and, you know, I kind of want to go into how... What do you really think about people who speculated that you were playing some kind of like persona or do you think you were just being yourself on the show? Do you feel like you had to put on a little bit of a exaggerated character to get, you know, the attention that you got? Or what do you say to people who think that it was all just kind of an act? When I did the show, like it literally the idea started as a complete joke. Like I literally like I always create personas like my mom knows yeah. around the house. Yeah. I'm I'm barely speaking in my yeah. normal yeah. accent. Like I'm always yeah. making accents, like making characters like that's just how I am. And I made this like spoiled brat character, yeah. like based on things around I've seen and like my own life. And I just did that on Dr. Phil. So it's not who you are or people would think it's not who you are in like everyday life. Yeah. You There's a part of me that's like, oh, I want all these nice things. And like, uh -huh. I love all that. Yeah. And yeah. but it's like. A part of me that I channeled as like a yeah. character and a persona and I would obviously yeah. be dramatic with it and so when people were hating on that they weren't hating on me they were in the idea that you yeah. created yeah. yeah it was like a shift because um, I did that for a while and then on my YouTube I was actually myself mm -hmm. as time mm -hmm. went on how did you navigate that it. transition like kind of shifting away from that persona I went from that persona and kind of having that like guard up a little bit but yeah. not at the same time to just fully being myself and at one point it was a hard transition because when I would get hate it wasn't hating on the girl on Dr. Phil. Like, I don't care about that stuff. It was hating on me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was, like, in my late teens, which is a very sensitive time, like, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. And it led to me, like, literally not knowing who I am. For sure. Like, that's yeah, why I took a break for yeah. so long. I was so unhappy for so many years. I literally didn't know, like, who I was. Like, yeah. I, like, was having a complete identity crisis, and I didn't mm -hmm. like myself. I didn't like my life. And that's why I, like, even took a step back the past year because I was like, I need to learn who I am mm -hmm. outside of all this social media and yep. outside of what my followers think I am because it was all so, like, meshed together. So and can you describe, like, that yeah. breakthrough experience? Like, what kind of led you to have this kind of revelation to be able to kind of break out of that that period of, like, having that identity crisis, as you mentioned? It's moving yeah. to New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moving it's to so New York. And I was working with so many people. Like, I had teams for my channel that would tell me what to do. Because I would hire people to like keep me in place, make sure I'm uploading, working yeah. on this, working on this, let's mm -hmm. do this, let's get this done. And everybody was telling me who I was. For sure. And I was just like, yes. I am closing all of this. Wow. Yeah. Like I literally just cut off all that. Like I literally mm -hmm. had so many employees working for me at some mm -hmm. point. I slowly like cut it off, cut it off. Like I literally had a store. I shut that down. I was like, I'm cutting off everything. And I just moved to New York. And I was like, I'm going to be by myself. You just re kind of relaunched this yeah. new brand. I think the new yeah. Nicolette, right? That's awesome. Myself. Almost like I'm going on like a retreat. Yeah, I, I, yeah. And just being there and living my life kind of outside of everything. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think that's like really mature of yeah. you too. To mm -hmm. like fully take a step back. And you see that a lot throughout like people childhood fame too and in their teenagers i know like Jeanette, people get lost in it yeah and i know yeah. like it's more for what your fans want than what mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. i know like Jeanette mccurdy for example she just like wrote about yeah. a book mm -hmm. and it's just it's kind of she was sacrificing her childhood for the iCarly fans rather than actually her living her life so i think that's really right. um, mature of you for yeah. taking a step back and realizing who you really are and when that's you're hard. young you don't yeah. separate who you are from the comments yeah. and what's online like exactly. people would tell me what to do in my comments mm -hmm. and I'm like, and I would follow it yeah and then like literally what I wear yeah. like what people like versus what I don't like that's what I would wear and I was like what am I doing For sure. mm -hmm. it just after years and years of that it leads to unhappiness mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that I broke out of that and now I'm just proud to be who I am mm -hmm. like I'm barely yeah. on social media these days I need to like I have some YouTube plans coming but I just Here fully like, am just transparent now. <laughs> sure. So, Nina, yeah. how did you really uh, help to support Nicolette during such a you know pivotal moment in her life where she was kind of going through it? And, you know, how were you really there for her? Were you kind of 
Did you offer any emotional support? You know, I'm sure this isn't this is your first time really handling something like this. You know, fame isn't something that people are ready for. You know, it kind of just happened so unexpectedly. Were you expecting that kind of reaction, or oh what did you think was gonna happen? It was like all of a sudden I'm on the street. Everyone's like Nina. I'm like. Oh my god, which family member is that? Yeah. Why are they here? <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, and it's like fans running up, and I don't know. I think I I assimilated very well into me, like Nina, because from day one I was literally Nina Gray, you know, and I was me from the beginning till the end. Obviously, because I'm older, it was easier for me to just step out. And with Nicolette and Blair, my younger daughter, who was also on the channel, I think I just became a very protective parent. At the same time of having like my arms around them, I also learned that you have to let go at times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when she was going through some of these crises, it's really hard because some of the comments are so brutal. Right. I mean, okay. so brutal that once in a while I'd go and delete a few of them so they couldn't see. Mm -hmm. but I was like, wait a second, no, I'm not being true to them. I'm really not. So I just left everything. And then when, you know, she'd have these, so mommy, what do you think? I'd be like, you have to be the strongest you. Be you. That's what I kept telling her. Be you, be strong, yeah. you know? And I always told her, you remember this. I was like, what does it matter what anybody in the world thinks? As long as you love yourself, you're good to people, you're kind, and you don't hurt people, then who cares about the rest of them? Let them uh -huh. say good or bad. Who right? cares about the rest? Yeah, that's what I look for. That's I used what to, I look for in people. I, I don't look at all these no. labels. That's I Forget look at, are you a good person? Yes. And Are you kind? Are you kind? Good Do you values? have good values? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a great way to live. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I really don't judge. And I feel like I've been at yeah. points where I've been so stripped by other people's judgments and, like, same yeah. with you. Yeah. I think that yeah. we just yeah. really don't yeah. judge others. Exactly. No. It's insane. Yeah. In our household. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no I was just saying, in our household, is judgment-free. From day one, we love everyone. We love everything, you know? And it's like, if it doesn't, that's it. Just be good, be kind, and really love yourself first. That's what I had to try to teach her. Love yourself first before anything else. For sure. For sure. And I think it's really good. I remember, I'm such a fan. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> I remember when, when you guys, you know, I know when you featured you in the clinic and like helping those childhood patients, oh, yeah. and then a lot of like the reaction was like, you need your own show for maybe oh. the demographic of maybe more mothers. And I think yeah. that's really good that you guys s stayed grounded in the yeah. core values, yeah. you know, and of helping people. And, of like, course. you find, yeah. you know, happiness in that. And I think that's really important. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. And I think before that aired, everybody thought I was just this, like, little arrogant, like, Beverly Hills <laughs> bunny. And nobody knew that I was actually, Thank like... You. Yeah, the real Nina that, yes, I might love shopping. Yes, I still shop at Chanel. Yes, I'm still like, you know, I do all of that. But that's not, that's part of me. That's for fun. But my core value is like I'm a mother first. I'm a doctor, dentist, you know, and that's it. Yeah, social media is literally like 0.5% of people's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because I realize like, a lot of people online, yeah. like, it's almost like you have to present yourself as this package. Like, you yeah. literally have to brand yourself as a person. Yeah, like, like famous or not on social mm -hmm. media. Yeah, like, this curated thing. Yeah. And it's like, people don't think you're a good person if you don't show it. Yeah. People yeah. don't think you're doing this. People don't think you're a mother. People don't think you're giving back this, that. Yeah. Unless you literally show it. Like, people don't think I'm doing anything mm -hmm. yeah. unless I literally show it. Right. It's insane. Like, on my, in like, maybe I just... I feel like I just took my break and I, I barely show anything. But literally on my Instagram, it just looks like I pose and like wear outfits. And that's like and nine. That's like 0.2 percent of my yeah, life. Exactly. <laughs> right. No, but but I'll, I also I found like yeah. it, oh sorry in that break I found so much value in privacy. Yeah. And I have the trouble letting go of it. On the flip side, did it ever feel because I know how close you are with your mom and like Blair? Did it ever feel like lonely in New York? It did feel very lonely yeah. in New York. I was literally by myself, like, 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole year that I was there. I have some friends in New York, and I love them so much. But I never found those, like, really close relationships in New York like I have in L.A. And with my friendships, friendships, like, I've been through shit where I haven't been in good friendships, and I've been around, like, I hate to say it, but, like, sucky L.A. people. Especially after, like, all the social media stuff started. Mm -hmm. But I've been through that. And so my friendships are like your family or it's like we're not really even friends. Sure. And I struggled finding that. No. Like even all my friends would come visit out there. Like Ben made me a promise when I first went to New York. My best friend, yeah. whole world, like business partner, now everything. 
He's like, I promise I'm going to visit you once a month and I will never break that. And he never broke it. He wow, didn't. Like, he came right all there. the time. Yeah. And, like, a lot of my friends would come visit. Yeah. That was what was kind of fueling me through. I always see the TikToks yeah. where it's, like, in New York, it's so easy to make friends in your 20s and your teens. It is. Like, I grew up it, there. It, it is. It okay. is. But then it's, like, then you come to L.A. and then it's just, like, it's more, like, individual friendship where you're, like, oh, you grab lunch one-on-one. And then New York, it's like you meet these all these cool people, and then it doesn't have to feel that you sustain it. Yeah, like really you just stuff. know a lot of people. Exactly. But you make friendships very randomly. That's like true. one day, I was literally walking on the street in Soho. Yeah. This was like a month yeah. to me moving in. Yeah. And um, I was like walking on the street. Uh-huh. I was going to Daniel Guizio's shopping uh, sample sale. Uh-huh. And this girl comes up to me, and she's like, oh, my God, hi. I used to watch your videos. I'm on the phone. I'm like, hold on. I got to call you back. <laughs> And I start talking to her. And then her dad comes up to us and he starts introducing himself like, oh, hi, like I'm Jonathan. It's so nice to meet you. This, that, this, that. And he thought I was one of her fellow classmates. No way. So he was like fully like introducing himself, yeah, everything. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you guys don't know each other. <laughs> right. And then um, I guess he was kind of there to like break the barrier. I end up like running into them later. And we literally oh, sat at Lauderay and talked for like yeah. six oh, hours. Wow. Like, literally, I was with them for, like, so long, and they ended up, like, being my family in New York just off yeah. of that, like, simple interaction. And, like, literally everything even in the acting world out there, like, he showed me the ropes. Like, he mentored me through that whole thing. Like, literally showed me everything I, like, everywhere I need to go, who I need to meet, just by that interaction. And yeah. they were, like, my closest friendship I had there that's off of meeting them off the street in Soho, I, literally. Yeah, I feel like you <laughs> feel like less, you feel more judged in LA if you did something like that, yeah. right? And in New York, like you go on the yeah. subway, no one looks like everyone's in a different type of attire, you know, everyone's just so different, but no one cares. Yeah, okay. but the environments are different. Like in my yeah. acting classes in New York, uh-huh. everyone was like there. Everyone yeah. would connect so much when we're there. And then when we leave, okay, bye. Like I text in the class group chat, anyone want to grab coffee? Nobody answers. <laughs> Stop. But in LA, yeah. then it's like everyone just so wants actually, to socialize. Just given like your new shift in perspective, you know, just about, you know, the way that you want to be able to approach life, you know, post fame, post Dr. Phil, what are your new goals moving forward, you know, as of right now? Okay. One, be authentic, be myself, <laughs> be happy. Yeah. Um, career wise, I really want to get into the TV and film space and specifically comedy space. So I'm working on a lot of that. Um, I feel like my passion has kind of shifted from like vlogs to like showcasing my life through comedy. So I'll probably mm-hmm. end up creating a show in that realm soon. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, aside from that, like I just want to be living my life to the fullest. I think I want to buy a place in Paris within in the next few years, be living between Paris and L.A. I I'll want come visit. To- <laughs> yeah, I want to live there with Blair. I want to live the best life possible. Ben will visit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. always timeshare. Um, just literally be happy and enjoy what I'm doing, and just expand my knowledge. I'm always educating myself in like every way I possibly can. Continue my activism for Iran. Yeah. Of course, that's gonna be until yeah. Iran's free and then forward. Yeah. Perfect response. It's it's always hard to answer that question because there's like. I'm going to think about this in an hour, and I'm going to be like, oh, I should have said that. I should have said that. No, I loved your answer. Yeah, because there's more to it than that. Honestly, priority happiness. That's the most important thing you said. That's the most important. Number one. If you don't have that, nothing else matters. Like, there's been moments where, like, I was the most successful ever. And I would literally cry every single day. Yeah, I remember those days, too. (laughs) Happiness is the most important thing. So what about yourself, Nina? Like, what are your new goals moving forward? I haven't thought about that in such a long time. I'm, I'm still practicing dentistry. You know, I worked in, I still work in underprivileged areas about three to four days a week. You know, so that is still a huge passion of mine. I know once, like, we blew up on YouTube, everyone's like, are you still practicing? I'm like, yes. Do your patients recognize you yes. from anywhere? Or <laughs> Yes. Yes, and right as I'm like about to go give them a shot, they're like, you're Nina. I'm like, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hold on. Like, oh, okay, one second. Selfie Maybe they feel shot. more comfortable with you that way, though, right? Or not really? Or does it make a difference? Yeah. Let me tell you, because my patients, I feel they're always comfortable with me because I'm like, a, yeah. I'm a big kid, right? But what this is what it is. This is how they look like. I'm like, oh you're like Nina? I'm like, so yeah. Surprised. They're like yeah. so surprised the whole time. I'm like, yeah. say something like that. Like, literally, you know in what awe. I mean? In awe. But I don't know. I just felt like it 
like somehow seamlessly became part of the practice and selfies and pictures and doing TikToks with patients and stuff like that. And just back to business again, you know. And I don't know. I think I'm in a good place right now because Nicolette's happy. You know, um, it, it Blair's was happy. Blair's Blossoming. happy. Like she's my, so mature for her age. She's so oh smart. Oh my, she's just. Uh, I think I'm the happiest I've ever been because both my girls are in a really healthy, happy place, and that for me is my happiness. I love that. You know, so, so thank you. So cheers to happiness, yes. health, and I'll give her one of her goals as well. Besalamati, which one? The goal that you want to finally start living your life. I have started. Yes. Sooner than later. She, yeah. You know, she's like, this is a new era. Like, I... Actually, it is. You, you're right. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Um, No, but you're right. Thank you for reminding me. You know, because I did everything young. I got married young, started my first practice at 26. Wow. Seriously, with Nicolette on one yeah, arm. Straight from dental school to getting married to getting pregnant to starting your own yeah. practice. Boss That's woman. Cool. That's Thank amazing. You know, I yeah. Like, yeah. Put that chair there. Yeah. <laughs> so many pictures are on my arm. It's so arm. cute. So many pictures are on my arm. It's like, no wonder you're so independent, you know? So I feel like in a way I just lived yeah. through that first part really fast. So this next aspect of my life, now that my girls are happy, I still love my career, I'd like to travel a little bit more and just maybe do some more things for me, you know, maybe just pick up and go away for three months. Just something like that. I don't know. Go visit Nicolette every other week in Paris and bug her. Yeah. I think you guys learn a lot, have learned a lot from each other. You know, as I kind of see the back and forth, the dynamic to me is like you guys kind of both yeah. embody each other's like spirit in different ways. So, you. yeah, you, know you guys are one unit. I can tell. That's it's lovely. Like, yeah. You know, it's so it's so beautiful because somebody said, you're such a young mother. I said, I was young when I had them and we grew up together. We learned, especially Nicolette and I, we learned everything together. I didn't know what I was doing. And she's like, as she's goo goo gaga. I'm like, okay, so I'll put the diaper over here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> literally we grew up together and I grew up again with Blair in a different way. And the three of us are so close. We love each other. Yeah, we still get I couldn't have asked for a better family. In the whole I world. couldn't have asked for like the yeah. did you guys are the I love Blair so much. Oh, and you know what's the most beautiful thing yeah. for me is that these two girls, my two daughters, are each other's best friends. It's the best. So I now I miss my brother. <laughs> we literally yeah. voluntarily yeah. share a room. Really? Yeah. So I'm back at home with my family five. now. Five. Yeah, They're we're five, five years, years apart. Okay. I literally set up yeah. two rooms for myself, and yeah. Blair and I willingly share a room. Oh mm -hmm. my god! <laughs> yeah, she's like, I just go grab in. my clothes, and then I go yeah. grab everything, bring it to Sleep Blair's room. <laughs> and if I look at Nicolette, the other day I went to go say good night to them, you know, and I was like going good night. Blair's like, why are you bothering her? She's jet lagged. She just came back from Paris. <laughs> oh my god, I fell asleep at seven p.m. I've been on my go to sleep at 10 p.m., wake up at 6 a.m. grind. I hear you every 6 a.m. Blair was like, I preserved your sleep last night. Mommy was trying to wake you up. Oh. I was just trying to give her a good night kiss. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? She's jet lagged. Bye. Bye. I'm like, <laughs> and I hear you every 6 in the morning. Yeah. I'm like, oh, who's that up? Because I, I yeah. sleep in as late as I can. But yeah. anyways. Next time, next season, so we have to have Blair. We have to have yeah. all three of you guys. Oh yeah. That'll be funny. Have the two of them here. That'll yeah. be a good dynamic. Oh, my God. Blair's the most entertaining person ever. Season three. Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah ready. So just really quickly, how can we keep up with you guys, you know, post-podcast? Like, what are your guys' socials? Plugs. How can we, yeah, keep up with your platforms? My Instagram is Nicolette Gray. I'm active on there and to get more intimate. I'm not currently posting, but I have some projects coming up on YouTube. Okay. Nicolette Gray as well. G-R-A-Y. Hey. <laughs> That's right. And mine is Nina Gray on Instagram. Thank you, Thank guys. you guys so Thank much. And congrats coming. on all of your achievements. It seems you guys are both very well-rounded individuals. So, Thank you know, you. I'm so glad this podcast is able to kind of shine a light on that. Oh my really God, give you over? guys the positive you. attention you guys cry. deserve. <laughs> <laughs> I had such a great time on here. Thank you, Thank you guys for coming. No, Appreciate it. We better do this Thank again. Us. It was so nice having a conversation. Can we end with it on guys. one thing? Yes. yes. Zan. Zendegi. Azadi. Woman. Life. Freedom. Thank you for that. Thank you.